welcome to the next uh, chapter on the forms of corrosion. And uh, today uh, we shall be discussing on what is called as microbial corrosion. What I have shown here, it is uh, a pipeline uh, got corroded due to microbial corrosion. To be more specific, the presence of uh, sulphate reducing bacteria and uh, the iron bacteria were uh, implicated in the corrosion of this particular pipeline. The pipeline lasted only for about uh, 6 7 years. This pipeline was transporting water from a river and uh, this water went to a water treatment plant treated and then distributed. The corrosion occurred between what I would say uh, the water treatment plant and where the water was taken out from the river, we call them as a, a raw water site. So, this is the kind of problems uh, you, you normally encounter. There is other problem which uh, we analyzed uh, you know some time back as corrosion of a pipeline uh, you know carrying cooling water and uh, it was lasting about 5 to 7 years old. The cooling water here uh, was uh, treated sewage water and you, you see here you know you can see very clearly the kind of appearance you see. You see here this kind of silver silver is color that you see there you see the silver is color here silver is color that you see here are all due to the microbial corrosion more specifically it was due to sulphate reducing bacteria. And uh, such bacteria can lead to premature failure. See it is a pipeline and uh, in fact, this pipeline carries water from the chiller and goes to the heat exchanger and you know in fact, it, is, it was used for one of the uh, the Pfizer hotel where the air conditioning system you know you know the air conditioning systems how it works and uh, and this is this, this pipeline is um, carrying the, the cooling water. Now, I do not know how much you can able to see visualize this here there is a small leak you see here ok. There are lot of punctured holes coming from the pipeline and, and so that was as, as a problem. Now, the the microbial corrosion as we see it is it is a, a problem to several industries It's just not only uh, some industries having problems. It happens in in so many industries these problems uh, really uh, noticed it could it could happen even in the aircrafts especially in the fuel tanks it can happen in the nuclear and thermal power plants it happens in the marine uh, atmosphere, and it can happen in underground pipelines. 
sewage handling and uh, treatment industries metal working industries See, I have just listed a few examples actually, you know, it is this not only confined to uh, this chemical process industries, you know. See, chemical process industries is, is a generic name, you know, it could be a fertilizer, it could be petrochemical, it could be various types of chemicals being produced. In all these industries, you notice that microbial corrosion is one of the should I call a mechanism of corrosion that causes a premature damage to the structures. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to give a very uh, brief uh, discussion uh, you know deliberation I would say on microbial corrosion because this involves uh, quite a bit uh, expertise related to biology ok. So, I think uh, you know we are not so comfortable in dealing with the biological situations, but nevertheless as a corrosion specialist you should understand broadly what kind of mechanism that operate in microbial corrosion and what are the types of microbes they cause corrosion, how do you control them and how do you monitor them. So, that is what I am going to discuss uh, you know in this particular class. The first and foremost that you would uh, like to know is the microbes are involved. But the microbial corrosion in a way is not a mechanism by itself ok. The microbes presence can affect various forms of corrosion. What do you mean by that? Say pity corrosion, stress corrosion cracking, uniform corrosion, even the intergranular corrosion. Many of these forms of corrosion can be accelerated by the presence of microbes. Now, how are these microbes really work on it ok? What is the mechanism through which these microbes really affect the metals? Now, the microbes first of all you know they produce organic and inorganic acids, they produce this acid. How do they produce as a metabolic pipe product. What do they metabolize? They metabolize related to carbon containing compounds, nitrogen and phosphorus. These are all the nutrients 
they take these nutrients, they metabolize and the byproduct of that could be an organic acid or an inorganic acid. What are these uh, acids? The organic acids are acetic acid could be citric acid could be a succinic acid lactic acid etc they are the prominent acids they form now the these organic acids are not as strong as inorganic acids right but nevertheless they can bring down the ph of the environment significantly and especially so it the localized areas of the metal surface we'll see how these acids are confined to the surface they are not getting affected by the external environment bulk water is not getting affected these acids are secreted at the surface of the base metal substrate and so they cause corrosion of the metals. Inorganic acid as much as 10 percent of sulfuric acid you can you can you can you can produce. And uh, they produce how they produce it is it is a I just tell this is called as sulfur oxidizing bacteria. We will talk about in details about the nature of bacteria subsequently. So, they can produce uh, th these acids and these acids can lower the pH of the environment on the surface and so they in turn cause corrosion. Now, you see that bacteria per se are not going to eat the metals. They create an environment and that environment in turn is very corrosive in nature. This is one type of mechanism. The other one is they can produce sulphides. under an aerobic conditions. This is done by sulphate reducing bacteria. Now, how does how does this sulphide affect corrosion? Let us say it forms iron sulphide. The iron sulphide or conducting, I mean conducting means what electrically conducting compounds. They can lead to galvanic corrosion. So, assume that you know I have metal surface that there is a one patch where you have iron sulphide formed, the neighboring metal becomes anode, the iron sulphide becomes a cathode, there is a corrosion or you have a iron sulphide which is porous allows the water to enter into it, then there is going to be a galvanic corrosion between the iron sulphide and the base metal. Assume that the iron sulphide is quite continuous, impervious, and nothing happens. In fact, corrosion rate will, will drop, but that is does not happen in practice. So, you normally see that the presence of sulphides cause the corrosion of the metals, more so steels, it can happen. You can also introduce the 
new redox systems redox reactions I would say oxidation reduction reaction. Generally what is the redox system you we normally you see for corrosion of metals either the oxygen reduction reaction oxygen with hydroxide equilibrium or H plus hydrogen equilibrium right this redox systems it can introduce one more and it can cause the corrosion process that is another cathodic reaction that will also assist the corrosion of the metals. You have seen in the mixed potential theory right the more redox processes more corrosion can really can can happen. You can produce concentration cells cells either of chemicals and or the oxygen there. I can have oxygen partial pressure variation between two locations one place is rich in oxygen content other place is poor in oxygen content there is a cell and so there is going to be anode and cathode can lead to the corrosion process. Now, what what it does do what what does it do in some cases they can depolarize the cathodic reaction. I think you guys are very familiar with electrochemical concepts of kinetics right. If it is depolarizing what happens to the corrosion rate increases right the water voltage decreases and so the corrosion rate increases. An example here is um, let us take this suppose you have iron it gets oxidized it is an anodic reaction right and you have water can get split into that can form hydroxide can form hydrogen it could be a cathodic reaction right water splitting water reduction could be a cathodic reaction. If I can accelerate this reaction if I can accelerate the cathodic reaction then what will happen to anodic reaction will increase provided the cathodic reaction is the rate determining step if this is a slow step if you can fasten this particular reaction then the corrosion reaction overall increases. So, what is happening now suppose I have a sulphate and I can combine with this what happens it can form with SRB sulphate reducing bacteria. Please notice that SRB takes away hydrogen to combine with sulphate sulphate to form sulphides. So, that means this is what is this called? This is called as a depolarization. Please look at it is not an electrochemical reaction, right? The hydrogen is already in the atomic form. So, so, this in fact facilitates this one. So, this is called depolarization process. Now, what else can happen? This iron 2 plus can combine with sulfur sulfide and form iron sulfide, right, as a corrosion product. See notice here now sulphate reducing bacteria is not really doing anything to the metal directly it just facilitates corrosion indirectly by depolarizing the cathodic reaction 
and producing iron sulphide which also get catalyzed through a galvanic action. So, this is going to be a problem if you have sulphate reducing bacteria in the system ok. So, this is another kind of mechanism that can cause the corrosion of metals. We talked about introducing a new rock systems you know. Suppose, if the environment has traces of manganese ions. it can accumulate right, it can accumulate m n 2 plus and form m n 2 plus and m n 4 plus redox system. this is a another type of bacteria right. So, it can now introduce increase the rate of corrosion quite significantly. The bacteria can also form biofilms it is also called as slime it can form on the on the on the surface actually it is it is a byproduct of uh, the metabolic product and you know, metabolic uh, processes and uh, these are all called protein rich polymers. If you have a metal biofilm. It is also called as uh, the biofilm now can consist of an acid we talked about before. It can consist of iron sulphide. So, it can be corrosion products and it could be a metabolic products They sit on this biofilm right. Now, assume that I have some acid at local places or I have iron sulphide at local places. So, here I have let us say organic acid, here I may have iron sulphide. So, what happens? Now, the corrosion is now confined to that particular place because the biofilm it separates the environment. Now, this is your environment. The biofilms are formed as a result of the metabolic activity of the of the microbes, but in any case you see some kind of fouling happening on the metal on the metal surfaces if you have some organic products in water right. Maybe that you know some kind of fouled leaves for example ok and many of this the organic products can sit on the metal surface a few layers can form and in fact that only invites the microbes you see the microbes will not go to the surface unless otherwise they find some nutrients in the surfaces these nutrients are what they are consist of carbon nitrogen phosphorus compounds they are nothing but organic you know organic substances actually so there is a relation between cleanliness of the water or the environment and then relation to the microbial activity. If the water is quite clean and everything in you know, the microbial activity comes down. So, that apart when you have a organic fouling then you have microbes colonizing this have the microbes colonize it 
they secrete the extracellular substances as a byproduct, they all form the surface, and these are all called biofilms. And this biofilm plays a critical role in, in corrosion of the metal. First of all, it localizes the environment here, it can also here is environment. Now, I am going to magnify this biofilm and I make it quite bigger right. This is the please look at this a membrane type you know the biofilm allows the water to diffuse through it is not it is not going to be a barrier like you know for water the water will be there anyway that means the water will be in fact the metal will be wet completely it is not that metal will be totally dry at all it is metal will be totally wet the by bio, the biofilm in fact the major fraction of the mass is due to water only. So, water is going to be there the so, water is your water your air there is a dissolved oxygen present here D O is a dissolved oxygen content right. right. Now, please look at as a biofilm what will happen to the concentration of oxygen as you move from here to this what happens? The oxygen is let us say here is 100 percent dissolved oxygen here right and as you move, move down here, here least oxygen content in the water. So, it can form a concentration cell with respect to the oxygen content. So, what happens now here? That means, this place is totally anaerobic. This place is anaerobic, right? And this place is what? aerobic that means, you have reasonable amount of oxygen present here, here the oxygen content is reduced. So, this leads to a different situations for the microbes to persist to live and the microbes live here they are called as aerobic bacteria and these bacteria are called as and aerobic bacteria. So, it is possible that you have somewhere here an aerobic bacteria you have aerobic bacteria. sitting on the metal surface. This is a very dangerous you know combination for the corrosion of metals, we will see that uh, shortly ok. So, the idea of uh, showing this right now is how these biofilms can localize the processes, the corrosion products the metabolic products on the surface can cause localized corrosion thing and so that leads to severe amount of corrosion like a pitting and leaking can happen at these places. In fact, if there are stresses it can lead to stress corrosion cracking as well ok. So, there are cases where the stainless steels are suffered stress corrosion cracking because of microbial presence because it gives an acid there are chlorides and there are stresses 
and in fact there is a going to pitting and so that leads to stress corrosion cracking of metals. Whereas as I told you before the microbial corrosion is not a corrosion any different from the normal types of corrosion. It only microbes assist the, the various forms of corrosion that we, we saw so far. Now, in practice what in fact it happens uh, I think if you can uh, recollect my the photo I shown before this is very interesting actually right. Um, if you see I do not know how visible it is, is it visible to you here yeah. this one so all this they are all called as tubercles called tubercles right your lumps you can see lumps of them you break it break open it you see the black here and this black is nothing but this anaerobic thing because in, in over there the oxygen content is very less and the sulfate reducing bacteria remain there and create uh, hydrogen sulfide and then what and then they create what is called as uh, iron iron sulfide lead to corrosion process. So, this is what happens when you have uh, you know microbes present in in the water. Let me touch upon um, a few things about um, the microbes what they are present here ok. Again as I told you it is a huge classification I will make it a little bit more um, simpler here. Broadly you can classify them as um, fungi, algae and uh, you can also as as a microbes. In fact, the fungi is known to uh, induce corrosion in aluminum alloys happens, but these are predominantly the problem. And these microbes can be classified as aerobic and anaerobic. And sulfate reducing bacteria is uh, among this. There are of course, several sub classifications I just give only two examples and um, what are their uh, biological name. One is called as D sulfo vibrio ok. One and you also have D sulfo is called D sulfoto macolum ok. So, uh, these are uh, these are all affected this affect the this all affect the steels stainless steels etcetera. They affect actually all of them uh, reduce sulfate to sulfides right they have all this what they do is they convert this into sulfides they do that this anaerobic uh, I think I made a mistake huh? I am sorry for that. This are all this is actually is um, anaerobic bacteria ok. Please make this change it is, is anaerobic bacteria and uh, this is a aerobic bacteria. Hmm? The uh, uh, aerobic bacteria some of them are called as um, uh, 
know iron oxidizing bacteria in general terms ok and these are called as thiobacillus. Some of you might be aware of this thiobacillus and all you know some of you be knowing about bio leaching some you might have studied in the mineral beneficiation process you know they are used uh, this thing. So, thiobacillus is, is one, Galeonella is one another one, Galeonella. Anyway, so these are all uh, you know the one which thrive in the aerobic conditions, these guys thrive in the in the anaerobic conditions. The situation where I talked about in normal pipelines or um, you know uh, in industries uh, you can also have on the top aerobic bacteria on the bottom they can have anaerobic bacteria right and they can uh, they can synergize the corrosion process See for example, ok, you have iron bacteria here, iron bacteria or oxidizing bacteria, sulfur oxidizing bacteria ok. what it can do? It can take sulfur converted to sulphate S or B what it can do? Convert this into sulfur and the cycle again continues ok uh, the process. So, they can keep on you know um, the course can continue even though you may not have a large amount of sulfates with the limited sulfates the corrosion can continue and abated in the actual situations. Now, let us go into how do we um, how do you prevent microbial corrosion. There are several ways uh, that you can do. The first and foremost is to keep the system free from microbes. And also clean. what do I mean by keep the system free from microbe? It is not possible always, but where it is possible you should do that. A good example is uh, hydro testing, people do hydro testing ok. So, this is what pipelines, heat exchangers, any pressure vessels that we talk, talk about is designed to take a certain pressure right. Before you put them into service you need to pressurize it. The best way to pressurize is with water, you cannot do with the gas because it can be dangerous. So, when you use water there are many cases the heat exchangers hydro tested and even before commissioning the tubes started leaking primarily because the water that they used contained the microbes. So, what you can do in this case use sterilized water. I could also add along with this some biocides. 
we should be talking about this galionella right this is what is very common in water and it can cause corrosion problem. In the pipelines people use cathodic protection. underground pipelines. You do not have much control over the soil nature right. The soil you know you are going to hundreds of kilometers of pipelines you are laying and you have no control over that. So, it is not possible to keep the soil free from microbes. So, you do cathodic protection. In fact, the microbes can also degrade the coatings the paint coating that you apply microbes can uh, disintegrate lead to corrosion and uh, but yeah we can do that of course where possible we can do that yes. We can also increase increase the pH in the range above 9 to 10. So, what does it do? The aerobic bacteria will not live. So, so, the cathodic protection when you do it has two purposes one of first of all it does not allow the metal to corrode secondly in the cathodic protection it will create hydroxide is not it there is going to be hydrogen evolution. So, both way it is beneficial to that. In a closed system you can use your sides. Please look at when I say closed system and you know and um, what are these closed systems? It is a cooling water system right. Open recirculating system It's a cooling water system. Mm -hmm. In fact, it is invariably they all use this and uh, these biocides some of them are uh, could be like chlorine gas Cl ClO2 chlorine dioxide activated bromine. ozone and uh, so these are all really they are all oxidizing right they simply um, they are all called as they are all called as oxidizing agents. People also use what is called as enzymatic poisons. They simply attack the protein structure of the microbes, and so these they simply die. You can also use surface active agents an example is um, quaternary ammonium compounds.
they are used actually ok. So, they can penetrate the lipid cells you know and then they simply damage uh, the walls of microbes and so they also you know kill the bacteria. The next is uh, how do you evaluate? Actually, it is rather difficult to exactly prove that the microbials are the reason for corrosion of the structures. Many times it can be done indirectly. For example, you take the material and you expose the same conditions in the, in the sterilized water and if the corrosion of the metal is better, corrosion rate is uh, you know lower, then we can say that it is suffered microbial corrosion. Alternatively, you take the uh, sterilized water and you dip the metal, you add microbes and find out that the corrosion is, is anyway, anyway different at all. Or the visual examination, you just look at it and see there are any microbes present at localized areas. So, from the point of view of diagnosing whether the particular failure is due to corrosion or not is many times is indirect of that. You can take the corrosion product, you can analyze for the presence of the various microbes. So, it is it is a kind of indirect evidence that you normally collect to show that the microbial corrosion is in action. If you really want to monitor whether corrosion occurs or not, what people do is people install the coupons. The coupons are installed in a system, you take out periodically, see whether there are microbes or not. Very interestingly, when you talk about microbes, they are sessile microbes, they only cause corrosion. When I say sessile, what I mean by that? The microbes which stick to the surface, the one that flows in the water, they may not really cause any corrosion. So, suppose you take water and you found that there are microbes present in water, it does not automatically indicate to you that the system is suffering microbial corrosion. Alternatively, you take water, you analyze for microbes, there are no microbes are present, you cannot say that microbial corrosion does not exist because some microbes are sitting on the walls as a cell bacteria. So, it is always a difficult exercise to, uh, to, to analyze, evaluate the microbial corrosion of uh, any systems. But nevertheless, uh, you can use coupons, you can analyze the, the deposits. For what? You, uh, deposits for what? For the presence of microbes. You can also uh, do what is called as chemical oxygen demand, they called as COD, correct. Right. And uh, what is this chemical oxygen demand? 
it is oxygen required for what for the but degrading the various biological systems it could be organic things also right. So, the oxygen is required to degrade them actually. Why are they important? Because these are the systems which are used as a nutrients by the microbes. If I am having too much of COD that means, the system is full of nutrients available for the microbes to to survive. It talks about the quality of the water that can support the microbial activity. So, it is an indirect way of saying yes that can be microbial corrosion. Next is called as Everybody, it talks directly about the living organisms microbes. The microbes require the oxygen to survive. So, we can also look at determine the B body content. I am not going to talk about how we are going to do that, but it is enough to say that these are some of the ways to assess the probability of microbial corrosion happening in a given systems. Okay. Uh, again uh, as I told you and uh, the, the when you talk about the bacteria you know the only sessile bacteria is important. The bacteria that move around which is called as planktonic bacteria ok that is they are not that important, but more often people only determine the planktonic bacteria in the systems. Well, I think I have uh, tried to give you a, a broad overview of uh, of the uh, the microbial corrosion, but as just the beginning I think you guys can read further and uh, you know and I am sure that will be very useful because when you talk about a corrosion problem microbial corrosion is one of the causes of corrosion of metals ok. So, uh, ok. So, with this uh, we shall now uh, complete almost all aspects of um, aqueous corrosion of course, in the introductory level of course.